Hey, we're here with Seven Boys. Uh -huh. How's it been going, guys? Here on Tour of Monster Magnet, all around Europe. That's been great. We've been out here now about a month. Uh, we started in Germany, up through Scandinavia, now the UK. Um, the show's been great. Yes, yeah, so it was really great. Man. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, man. They just gave it right back to us. Awesome crowd. Excellent, excellent. This is the first European tour for, for you guys as a band. Yeah, yeah, as a band, yeah. Um, so, but you've actually been going since about 2005, I believe, is that right? Yeah, I'm in and around then, yeah. I'm, you know, uh, it took us a while to develop the record. Um, you know, I had a lot of other gigs I was doing, you know, at the time of, of, from Typo Negative. Course, so, you know, it was between albums, between Typo Records that we worked on it, between touring. Matt was also a sound engineer for Lou Reed, right. so he toured a lot. You know, and then he even got like Vinnie Paul in on it, and you know to release it on his label. And at that time, he was even he was starting to release some um, Hell Yeah, yeah. You know, so he can work on his schedule. So it took a while to get it out. Yeah. You know, uh, Heaven Is Gone, the record that's being released today in Europe, was actually released in April 2009 in the States, right. but only in North America. And that was on big, big. That big was on big, big records. records. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, obviously, like, as you mentioned, you're in Typo Negative and you've done a lot of touring with Pantera over the years. Is that how the friendship bonded? Yeah, started? yeah. I mean, yeah, we toured so much together and we had such great, we all got very close. Yeah. You know? So, um, actually, the way we got involved, initially, well, the first time I heard the band was um, like three days before Dying Pass. They had played Urban Plaza in New York City. Me and Johnny went to hang out. Of course, we ended up back on the bus drinking seagulls all night, like, getting completely blasted with them. <laughs> and he was like, so come on, we get a new stuff from here. So I threw it in. And Dime just kept playing it over and over on like 11. He loved it. Right. You know? So it was like the first time that Vinny actually got ears on it. Yeah, I mean, you know, uh, after really, really beating the music down and working it hard, me and Matt working hard in the trenches together and um, creating it and producing it, you know, we were just just way too close to like mix it, you know. Yeah. And um, Johnny had come up with the idea of we'll send it to Vinny. You know? Yeah. At the time, Vinny was just starting Big Vin Records. Yeah. And his own, in his own words, he was going through thousands of discs of like these bad Pantera wannabe bands that was still sending him music, and he heard hours, you know. And he was like, and he mixed it. He put a shadow on me, right? Yeah, he mixed down. It came out great. It came out great. And um, he was like, I, I want to put the sound on my label. Yeah. Let me do this. So, I mean, it's kind of a complicated story because at the time, Typo was signed to SPV. Yeah. So, um, and Vinny only had distribution in North America. So we're like, okay, so you know what? SPV wanted to put it out too. So we'll have them put it out the rest of the world. Right. And Vinny put it out in, in, in the States. So we made like a release date and everything for the record in the States. And then, you know, shortly after that, SPV went on. Right. So we lost our opportunity <laughs> for, to bring a record out here, never mind Typo's yeah. record. So that's how it ended up just being released in North America in 2009. Right. And then, uh, now we're on Napalm, yeah. obviously. And then um, what happened with that was, Typo was looking for a new label. Okay. So we, we were going to sign with Napalm. Napalm was going to release the next type of negative record. Peter had just signed the contract. Within 24 hours, he passed away. So, you know, then, uh, you know, Master Mayfond came to the table and was like, you know, I really love the record, I want to put the record out, I want to do another record, and so forth, so. So, a full steam ahead then. Does it cause problems with your scheduling? Because I know you guys are involved in, in other projects as well, you've got other musical... He's got no so, schedule. He's got no schedule. <laughs> <laughs> he just, he just <laughs> Anything to do whatever, with Whatever they like say, it. I'm going to do. <laughs> <laughs> he's out here. He yeah, saved his fun. beer and he can stand on stage. He's out here. One more need. That's it, that's all I need. I got what I need right here. Matt's got a hectic schedule. It could be tough yeah, sometimes. I can imagine, you know, yeah. But, um, but you know, somehow, some way it all pans out and we were able to do a lot together. Right. Yeah. So, you, are you guys, I know you're based in Brooklyn, are you, are you a Brooklyn band? All from the same neighborhood. Yeah, oh, so the scheduling needs a little bit. He lives around the block from my mother. Excellent. Excellent. I've heard the album a few times now and um, it seems to have a really big dose of um, sort of like really heavy grunge sound that was around yeah. early, the early to mid 90s. Was there a conscious effort to sort of like get that sort of feel across with this particular Well, I, 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 I think that at the time that, uh, you know, I first initially started thinking about 
for what I was going to do with it. I mean, at the time, I've been playing the tackle in for 16 years. You know, I've done nothing else. There was no time to do anything else. So I was kind of like, well, what the hell would I be playing if I wasn't in tackle? You yeah. know? And really, basically, what I wanted to do was a straightforward, hard rock, heavy, melodic band. You know, so I just took the, the five, my five favorite bands. I mean, I was never into this new metal shit and all sorts of crap that came out, this fake punk. You know, yeah, none of that before. stuff, you know, it just, <laughs> never, it just never settled with me, right? And, you know, so to me, the five greatest um, rock bands, or hard rock bands, yeah. was, was Zeppelin, Sabbath, ACDC, Alice in Chains, <coughs> and um, Soundgarden. Right, so that's where you so guys want to I kind of wanted, yeah, I, 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 yeah, yeah, well, I really, really wanted right. to, like, meld those elements, you know, and I, I tried to... I, I, I tried to really um, scope the album uh, around physical graffiti and black side of sabotage. Right. I failed, but you know, right. whatever, you feel what it is. Yeah. Now you came from Typo Negative, which is a band that are renowned for these long songs, these big epic songs, yeah. lots of time changes, lots of melody changes. How does it feel to actually write stripped down songs? Beautiful. <laughs> You hit it right on the court. Easier, easier thing for you? Yeah, of course it's easier. I mean, you know, in one way, I, what I did was I simplified it for myself. Yes, yeah, so all I wanted to do was plug into a head yeah. and crank, you know, and uh, maybe one or two key changes in the song instead of six. Uh -huh. you, know, uh, you know, with typo, I had to have a big rack behind me with all these gauge structures. It was, you know, a million things to remember. Really difficult to remember when you're drinking a six pack. Oh, uh, yeah. And, but it was brilliant. I loved it, you know. But yeah, I wanted to strip it down. I wanted a straightforward hard rock band. But what did I go do? I went and complicated it by singing it. So now, you know, my gig is even more complicated. How was that making the change from. I mean, you've done a lot of backing vocals for Typo. Um, but to actually make the stage from guitarist backing vocals to guitarist frontman, was that extra pressure for you? Well, you know. The original reason why I wanted to do it was a very practical reason. I just did not want to deal with another lunatic singer's bullshit. Right. So I figured I'd simplify it and just, you know, I'll do it myself, you know. But of course, when you, you, you say, oh, I'm going to do this, you know, there's a lot more to it. Yeah, of course. Then you figure. So it was really, I played it by ear, you know, and I made it up as I went along. Yeah. You know, I had no idea really what was going to come out. Yeah. You know, and it, it developed over time on its own. Also, another thing from the top Gone from being the main guitarist in Typo Negative right. to actually playing in a twin guitar band. How does that work for you guys? Do you, does it change your style of writing? Does it open you up a lot more to? So I remember reading an interview with Mick Mars talking about Motley Crue and they got another guitarist, so John McGarvey days. He was saying he was relieved because it opened up a lot more space for him to, to get away with stuff live and stuff. Do you guys find that? Or? Well, I don't know if it's a situation for me, but I, I, again, it was another practical reason that when we first formed the band, I wanted to just do a power trio because we just didn't want to pay another guy. Right. I figured we'd keep it cheap. One yeah. guitar player, one bass player, and a drummer. But, you know, so what, ended up, what, what, you now, what, what ended up happening, though, I had all these ideas yeah. for other guitar parts, you know, since I don't have four arms, yeah. you know, we, we needed another guitar player. And then Matt coming into the band opened up a lot of horizons, because he, he comes from you know, the same hard rock roots and past as me, but you know, he also, he also comes from other areas. He's a very smart, talented guy. Obviously being involved in yeah, the production as well, Matt, you obviously have your ears. That's why I do what's going on now. Year, but you know, think about a typo and think about like all the other parts that were going on from you know other instruments and stuff. You know, yeah. that they had that. You know, in this, you know, there was a lot of ideas that just couldn't be done with the guitar. Right. You know, so, cool. Yeah. So yeah, we definitely it definitely opened up the uh, creative breath of, of yeah. the band by having that pretty much. Excellent.